Hi, I'm Mike. I'm from Denver, but I've been living in Italy for a long time. I'm the service learning coordinator and host family coordinator for CIS Intercultural Study Abroad, formerly known as Siena Italian Studies. Over the years in my work with Study Abroad, I've worked with thousands of students. I'm actually going to get a chance to catch up to some of those students and see where they are today, talk about Study Abroad, and what Study Abroad has meant for them in the rest of their lives. You'll be able to see these conversations on YouTube at CIS Intercultural Study Abroad or on our website, CISStudyAbroad.com. If you're a former student and you want to have a conversation with me, just let me know at mike at cstudyabroad.com. Ciao. Okay, well, here I am again. I'm Mike, and here we have Erika. Ciao. Buongiorno, buonasera. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, Erika, uh, like, who are you? What do you do? Tell me. Okay, so currently I am an Italian teacher at Boston Latin School, obviously in Boston. Um, yeah, that's me. Okay, so, uh, but where did you go to university? So you, you're an Italian teacher, right? Yes, yes. So but I'm you're teaching not Italian from Italy, Italy, right? No, I'm not from Italy. Not. I'm not even a little bit of Italian. Okay. I'm zero, I'm negative. I wish I were, but here we are. But here. Um, <laughs> So I went to Ohio State, the Ohio State University, mm -hmm. and at Ohio State, of course, you can imagine it's a pretty big school. So I was looking for a program that was small enough to make me feel like less of a number, and that program just happened to be Italian. So I took Italian, and then, okay, I'm going to be honest here. There was this boy, and he was <laughs> so much better than me. And honestly, that just made me so frustrated. So then I was like, I'm gonna be better than you. And so I started studying really hard. And then I found out about SIS my, after my third or no, fourth semester of taking Italian. And OSU had this requirement, I don't know if they still do, but you had to take four classes to be able to do the SIS program. Mm. And so my junior year spring semester was when I studied abroad in Siena in 2013. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. They still, I think that Ohio State, because a lot of different universities want to do it a different way, they want yeah. to send us kind of their higher level uh, students. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as you know, we'll take students who have never said the word right. how before, uh, but right. then, you know, you, obviously the higher level students are in advanced classes and things like that. So, so yeah, okay. So, I guess that maybe answers that question, why you decided to study abroad. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that and because I just knew, you know, I had been to several countries in Europe when I was in high school and it was such a good experience. But one thing I always felt during those trips was like, yeah, it's great. I'm touring. I'm seeing all these beautiful things, but like, I can't actually interact with the culture because I don't know the, I don't know German. I don't know, you know, French. I don't know Italian. So for me, it was important to not only like have the travel aspect, but also like engage with the culture and the language um, in a way that I had not been able to before. No, yeah. Interaction with people is fun. <laughs> right. and, like not um, being that, that American is also very fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so the first time that you went out uh, of America, when was that? How old were you? Um... I think the first time that I went, I think we went to Mexico when I was like 10. Mm. I don't know if that really counts. Um, we it's went to Germany. <laughs> I just don't remember it very well. So, you know, yeah. my first trip I definitely remember was we went to Munich. I grew up in Charlotte. And so Lufthansa came to Charlotte when I was 11. So my dad was able to get these like super cheap fares right when they opened. And we went to Germany and we were in Munich and it was like, I was the master of the transit for my parents. And it was just super cool to see that experience. And it just really opened my mind like, okay, you are lit so small and there's so much to explore and learn about. Yeah, yeah. cool. 
Uh, it's a good thing that that happened. Um, anyway, so I worked with you in Siena, and it's it's a strange thing for me. My job is I kind of see people kind of in the same moment of life, <laughs> all always uh, in this slice of moment. And I actually see a lot of you before because then I have to decide your fate, right? So I'm the one who looks at all of your information and reads all about you, reads the things that you choose to write about yourself, and then look at the host families that we have and say, this one goes with this one. It looks like they're probably going to get along. Let's hope that it goes well. Um, so I worked with you, obviously, in Siena. Um, what do you remember about Siena? Like a, some memories, some, some, some things that you remember about your time in Siena. Well, um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that uh, my host family, you know, Katia and Alberto. Um, so when we were pulling up on the bus, I was like, oh man, I really hope they're my host family. There's this like young boy. I love kids. This would just be an awesome fit. Um, and then there was like- a People, we basically, we just take people from the airport and then we go to a parking lot and there's a bus full of students who I say, okay, please don't get off. Don't go with any host family because we've chosen, we've worked on this for months. And then there's a group of host families just waiting there eagerly to just grab a student. <laughs> right, right. We, we didn't know anything about them, which I was kind of like, I mean, I understood after the fact, right? But like in the moment I was like, mm. <laughs> Like, okay, we're here. Can I pick the one or, you know, that I want? So then, of course, um, it ended up being, it was like kind of weird situation because, you know, I arrived a little bit early. And so Selena, my roommate, ended up going with Katia and Alberto. And then I was still there because there was like confusion. So I was like, no, I didn't get the host family I wanted. I'm so sad. And then you took me to the host family that I had wanted anyway. Um, so it was just, yeah, that that's definitely a, such a great moment of, okay, I'm with these people. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't this feeling of, oh, you're an outsider and you're coming to our house and here's your room. I mean, from day one, Katya was like, you know, this is our home. Obviously the houses are smaller um, in Italy than they are, you know, in North Carolina, for example. So we were all so much in close quarters all the time, but I never felt uncomfortable. Like I never felt I just, it was just such a great experience to have that host family. But also, I mean, Selena and I had my roommate, we had like a very interesting trajectory of our relationship. And that really was an integral part of my experience in Siena as well was how we went from like, sort of feeling, you know, I would feel like frustrated and she would feel frustrated, but like we came out and I mean, I live in Boston now. So I went up to Montreal and we met up and it was just, I think the thing, if someone were to say, what do you remember about Sienna? It would be like the friendships that I've made, not only with the people who were in my program at the same time, but also with like young Carlos, for example, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that to me has been what was so tremendous about the, the Sienna Italian Studies program. And it's a, it's, a, it's like a scary thing too, if you think about, you know, just like, uh, I'm gonna go hang out, live, not hang out. I'm gonna live with a bunch of strangers for in a foreign country for months. That's like, I don't think if it, if it was put that way, come live with a bunch of strangers for four months. I don't know how many people would do that. Uh, but <laughs> that in itself, when you do that, you do, you find out so much about yourself. You find out so much about other people and the possibilities and the different types of people and yeah it's an important thing to do but you have to throw yourself out there yeah. right my second me best memory of sienna or not it's not a specific thing but was the bar beside school and betty and marco i mean i've, I've yeah. talked to no marco's being a tassista now right yeah but yeah uh and so he's he, but he's still there often you yeah. know he'll come yeah. that helps out his sister and, yeah yeah I was, me and betty were betty and i were texting like three months ago yeah yeah they're still there i mean the the property changed in the sense that it's it's the different property uh but it, i mean it worked out actually quite well for betty and herself but the 
the service is still the same. Betty is there every morning giving all of our students and all of the staff the coffee and pastry that they need. <laughs> that they, they surely need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an extension of our office and, and school. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then you um, went on with a little bit more of your life, but then you came back, right? Yeah. So um, I came back. I stayed a little bit longer with my host family at, right after the program. I actually stayed for like three weeks because they were like, oh, Rasta. And I'm like, okay. Um, so <laughs> if, you, if you're begging me, to, I mean, I guess I will. Um, and so I came back home and, you know, I was so sad all the time that I wasn't in Italy anymore. I was like, oh, this isn't Italy. And then my friends would make fun of me because I'd be like, they would say that they liked something that I was wearing or some, you know, bag or something. I'd be like, oh, I got it in Italy. And they'd be like, obviously you got it in Italy, Erica. Um, so it just became this like running joke that I was like, I'm going to move to Italy. And I told my mom, I, I was whining all the time about how I hated being here. And she's like, Erica, if you want to go back there, then you just need to figure out a way to get back there. Cause I'm not going to listen to this. Like you just got to figure it out. And I'm like, all right. So I went back to OSU for my senior year. And at this point I was taking like the higher level Italian classes and still obviously loving the language. And I found out about this site program, um, which is a partnership with Lombardia and Dickinson College. And they have students from like, you know, native English speakers basically come to Lombardia in the public schools, mostly high schools, and then be like a teaching assistant, assistente madrilingua, was like my technical term. Mm -hmm. um, and so I came back but the thing about that situation was I applied for it and OSU had three people that were applying for it. One person was accepted, one person was waitlisted. No, two people were accepted and then I was waitlisted. So I was like, and I found that out like a week before I graduated. So I was kind of like, oh my goodness, I had this whole plan. It seemed like it was set in stone. It seemed like, why wouldn't they accept me? So it was pretty devastating. That summer, I went back to Italy for Katya and was like a nanny kind of for just the summer. And then when I came home, I found out on the day my nephew was born, via C-section, so we were all up really early. I got this met this email from the program that was like, unexpectedly, a bunch of people have dropped out. These are the spots we have open. First person to respond gets them. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I was like, oh, your your nephew. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, okay, I want the middle school because you know the middle. I mean, I just when I was in Siena when I did this the SIS program, I did a lot of the English, um, you know, school volunteer work with mm -hmm. the younger kids. So I already knew that that was, like I wanted that age group. So it just kind of worked out in the most miraculous of ways. I'm like going up to Philadelphia to get my visa. I'm sending all the paperwork. It was just wild. So I started in January of 2015 in two middle schools in Legnano, mm -hmm. which is just which is different. The, which it's different from Siena, right? I mean, so you knew oh. kind of Italy from the point of view of Sienese culture, and Legnano is is Milano. I mean, it's it's up there, and yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big city. Siena is a, a smaller. Uh, kind of one of these, you know, quaint Tuscan villages you know, where... Right. And Lignano, I mean, is just, you know, like your average sort of, you know, right on the edge of a city sort of suburb place. And it's nice, it's fine, but it's definitely not Siena from an aesthetic viewpoint or um, a lot of other viewpoints, temperature, I mean, weather in general, right? Like, mm. um, but it was... Yeah, it was such a weird experience to go there. And people would always, the first year I was there, people were like, why do you have a Sienese accent, but also an American accent? <laughs> yeah, I get And that. I was like, I don't know. So I really like- <laughs> I know, it would be, you, you learned well in Siena. That's why. <laughs> because Katya, the first day that I came home with her, maybe the second day, she was like- That's your host yeah 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 Katya my host mom was like and I was like 
I mean, I didn't do a good job of the accent right there, but I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know the words you just used. I've been studying this language for like four years, I feel like, and I just, I don't know what you're saying. Mm. What, what do you think is the biggest difference between like your study abroad experience and then the, the second experience that you had? What was the biggest difference? Um, well, I think the biggest difference was just that I study abroad. I mean, every weekend I was like trying to go on some type of trip, whether it was to a, a town right, to, right outside of Santa, whether it was to Florence, whether it was spring break and we went to Morocco, then Barcelona. Whereas when I came back to actually live in Italy, like, you know, I wasn't, I had to just work. I mean, it wasn't like yeah. I could just have fun all the time. <laughs> um, so looking back, I mean, it was definitely such a more, I don't want to say a vacation, but it was much mm. more of a pleasure type situation. Whereas when I came back the second time, I mean, I wanted to increase my, you know, professional experience as well. So I, it was really important to me to focus on, okay, let me make these lessons really high quality so that when I either, you know, found my Italian to marry, which of course that didn't happen, um, <laughs> or I go back to the U.S., then I can either teach in the U.S. or mm. I can teach in Italy, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, I missed also, I mean, the, the group that we had created at, at SIS was just so close-knit and we would do everything together. We would go out, we would, and it never never really dawned on me like how important that was until I was in Lignano and I was really not around many Americans. So just the community that you build um, in with SIS, like with the teachers, with the staff, like it's, it's very, very unique and very special. Mm. Yeah. There's a, you mentioned like that, uh, like being a vacation and so like we from our point of view we definitely don't want it to be like just a vacation for students but we also have to like we know we, we have to keep our students really busy during the week and keep them engaged keep them doing stuff but at the same time it's super important to let you guys the, the students uh, give you plenty of time to just go out and explore you know and, and do things yeah. and, you know now I mean, it's, it's different even since when you were a student, one of the things that we have to do is we have to, you know, students find it comfortable to sit on the couch and just look like this, but we have to say, no, go out there, go travel, do things, get lost. It doesn't matter. Go, go find new things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, I, I, it's a fine line between it's, it's a vacation and because in our point of view, it's obviously not a vacation, but like go do stuff, have your weekend take it, uh, you know, take your 10 day break, go as far away as you can. Yeah. Right. Well, and I think that, you know, what was also cool about the program was that we had that, ex we had, and I always say this when I, when people ask me about my study abroad, the first thing that I like to say is that you can make it whatever you want to make it. Like, mm -hmm. I'll never forget, was it Noah who had the, um, butcher internship or was that henry i uh, don't know that was henry yeah henry that was yeah. awesome yeah that was awesome so you know you want to make so henry was one of my classmates and he was really interested in being a chef and so for his service opportunity he decided that he he asked mike um for, i don't know exact details but you know, <laughs> basically he said do you know anywhere where i can work in food and and we had a, a few conversations with a few people and then he said, like, what about a butcher? And I was like, well, I mean, I know where there's a butcher. And there are these two uh, guys who, you know, they were in their 60s. And they were like, they kind of looked at me weird. Like, what do you mean? He wants you to just come here? And I was like, yeah, he wants to come here and learn. And they're like, well, if he comes here at 7 in the morning, then he can, uh, he can do stuff with us. And I told him. And, you know, I, like, I don't know the students that well I mean I, I know them at like I've known them for like two weeks I told Henry like if you go at seven in the morning and I was kind of thinking like yeah the students are never going to go at seven in the morning but whatever at least I made the effort yeah. he went there every morning and after like a month they were just like giving him like the knives and like they'd get in meat like we need yeah. to cut it up into like five steaks and you need to you know do these and that and he was doing it yeah. Right. I mean, I think that 
and I, I knew that I wanted to do something with kids and I knew that I wanted to be with young people. And so I always use an example with my current students um, about one of my students. His name was Morgan, which I just thought was a really strange name for an Italian kid. Um, my son's name is Sean but... and he goes to Italian schools and <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, but, Sean yeah. might've potentially worded this question slightly better than mm. this little <laughs> baby did. So it was one of those activities where you go around and you're like, um, do you like apples? Do you like oranges? Yes, I like oranges. So it's like one of those interpersonal speaking. And he came up to me and he was like so bright eyed. And he said, do, no, I said, do you like apples? And he said, e like apples. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> perfect like it was just so pure yeah. you know mm -hmm. and so I always use that example with my students and the, they'll have moments and especially you know ninth graders right they're terrified of looking stupid in front of their peers you have to be cool in ninth grade right mm -hmm. and so I use that example um to say to my kids like I'm sure that that student went on to learn more because he was willing to put himself out there. Yeah. So I think that <laughs> there are just so many like things that happened in Siena that have really, you know, been this like jumping off point for all the other things that I've done in my life. Um, and probably 20 year old me who studied abroad in Siena would probably have been sad to know at that time that I didn't end up living in Italy. <laughs> that was really truly like something I was very uh, intent on doing but in hindsight I mean everything has worked out so well and I'm so happy that I had that experience and that because of that experience like I'm in the spot that I'm in right now actually when I do my open houses I have a picture of Katia and Alberto my host family yeah. and I say it's because of them that I'm able to sit here as a, you know, your teacher, so. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. And uh, the whole line of it, you know, from Ohio State then to study abroad and then you came back and then now you're teaching Italian. And if you go on our website, have you seen our new website? I uh, saw that it was being posted and I was like, I need to click it. I haven't yet. Well, there, right. there's lots. This this video will be on it in the, okay. in the next days in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the things that we're, that, that we want to be open to doing that we've kind of always been open to doing, but, um, maybe we weren't as focused on communicating all these things because we're just flexible. We can do all kinds of things and we just end up spending our time on kind of what we have in front of us often. And it's hard for us to find the time to then do a lot of the outreach stuff. And so that's what we're trying to concentrate on a little bit more right now, but um we want to work with more high schools so yeah you might find yourself coming back to italy with your high school so it might actually it might actually work out there it's gonna be very cyclical hopefully cyclical yeah, hopefully, yeah. i'm That's also good. i didn't tell you this either i started a master's program at middlebury oh, in congratulations Italian. oh middlebury is excellent with language that's like the top for languages yeah well <laughs> we need some of them too <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we'll see what's gonna happen with that this summer was my first summer i kind of i kind of applied just because i was like i like italian and we'll see how it goes but now mm -hmm. it's, it ended up being really awesome the three classes I took were just like grammar, which I was like, Antonella prepared me so well. I already knew all of this. And then um, uh, the other class was the magical world of Italo Calvino. So like, all right, literature and yeah. is great. Yeah. And then the other class was um, Boccaccio's um, Decameron in the Age of Coronavirus. That's cool. It was pretty. It was pretty wild. Um, oh, but it was really fun. Really cool. Middlebury definitely has uh, most everything probably set up there. They're even in study abroad and language learning, even considered pioneers in in everything that they do. But um, hey, we're open to any collaboration. Well, I was very like, 
prepared. Yeah. I was very prepared for that program because I mean, it's full immersion, right? It's the same thing as SIS. So mm -hmm. when I was taking all my classes at SIS, I just remember thinking like, it's going to be impossible for me to learn about art history or the history of food or the history of immigration only in Italian. Like that's not possible. But it is. <laughs> and then it was. <laughs> and then it was. Yeah, it's um, oh, you can think about it's just, it's one of those things like I tell my students all the time, guys. I'm like, ragazzi, veramente, vi giuro. And they're like, but then you see the one kid get it. And then the next time I say yeah. it, and I continue to just talk at them. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're smarter than we give ourselves credit for most of the time, honestly. So I mean, my favorite is always, I'm just not a language person. Mm. That's my favorite. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah yeah well all right let's go with one more thing like wh what else what, what would you finally kind of just say what would you say for anybody who's thinking about study abroad like doesn't know or somebody who's never even thought about study abroad as a possibility it's not even on their radar as a thing like what would you what would you say i would say that a lot of the people who studied abroad while I was studying abroad, same thing you were saying. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, let me start over. Um, I would say that no matter your level of language, no matter um, your interest in becoming an expert in Italian language, no matter you know if you're stressed out about figuring out how you're going to make it work with your graduation you will not regret this experience no matter what, no matter what you're looking for out of it, whether it's the volunteer aspect, whether it's the community aspect, whether it's cultural immersion. I mean, there's just, I can't think of a better experience as a young person to gain a greater understanding and a greater just appreciation for the world. And, you know, it's not just like, oh, Italy, you know, beautiful hills of Tuscany. Like it's actually getting to know the people. I mean, there's also that. Don't get They're, they're there. <laughs> yeah. It's the thing. But, see. you know, how do you go beyond that? And I think that, you know, in today, like you were saying about being on our phones all the time and always being so wrapped up in technology, the ability to go to a place and connect with other people who have had such different experiences and different lives and coming together, you know, whether it's at the Contrada, you know, dinner, whether it's whatever, like it's, cool. it's so just, I mean, I want to say unique, but I really mean unico and I know they mean the same thing, but they just don't feel like they mean the you same thing. You unico, eh, unico, no matter. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do it. All right, Erica. Well, thank you for taking the time and enjoy both your masters and your teaching and your time off too, because enjoy life as well. <laughs> right. Perfect. Okay. Grazie. Okay. Ci sentiamo. Ciao. Ciao.